it's not enough by just saying you're wasting my time you know you should just uh, drop this course you'll fail this master or you're you're gonna get an F and all that that doesn't help that doesn't that doesn't develop a learner hello everyone welcome to the third episode of edubytes in this episode I'll be talking about feedback as we know in learning feedback is crucial in order to encourage our learners or even to suggest improvement to our learners the problem with a lot of feedback is that they are pulling back the students more than developing them so in this episode I'll be introducing you to this fit forward approach instead of feedback we try to give uh, responses that encourage our learners to move forward. Now, based on what Joe Hirsch in his book, The Feedback Fix, he outlined the six ways for us to improve our feedback so that it can be turned into fit forward. There are six, but I'm, in this episode, I'll be sharing two of those six strategies. The first one is expand possibilities. A lot of time when we give our feedback to our learners, we tend to focus on the rating part. We rate them according to what they have produced. Uh, it doesn't point out the other possibilities that the learners can achieve or the other possibilities that the learners can uh, go and uncover. So what he means by expand possibility is we point out what else can be done based on the thing that they have produced. If they're really good at it, well, you say you might want to produce this in, in the form of video, you might want to publish this in a blog and all that, offer them that kind of feedback so that they feel encouraged to continue doing what they do best. Or if they're doing badly in certain aspect, then point out it, point out that problem and try to offer uh, alternatives for them, right? If you see your learners are having problems in that area, then you should also look at your part. What else can be done to help this learner to kind of achieve the intended goal or intended, intended learning outcome? It's not enough by just saying you're wasting my time, you know, you should just uh, drop this course, you'll fail this master or you're, you're going to get an F and all that. That doesn't help. That doesn't, that doesn't develop a learner. It actually kills them in, in learning. I know some learners are tough, but as the educators, we should not give up easily. We try our best to guide them, expand other possibilities or alternatives so that they could develop, at least achieve uh, the minimum as we required. I even if you give feedback like good, brilliant, sometimes if you do this too often, even the good ones start to give up on uh, submitting better work because they thought that is the best already it because it doesn't expand the possibilities. Another point that Joe mentioned in this book is uh, good feedback or good responses should be particular or specific it's not information dump a lot of feedback are kind of like information dump you know once they're done we just give them and then that's it um, it should be more meaningful by being specific in certain areas for example if you're asking them to write an essay instead of wait until they finish the whole essay you can give your feedback progressively so let's say they have done the first paragraph you can always comment on the first paragraph you know what else to improve if they're okay then they can proceed okay this takes a bit of time but if you do this frequently you make use of the existing tools like google docs you don't really feel that it's that tiring in fact it will be meaningful because you get to see your learners improve you get to see better quality in their work and all that it's like doing the hard work first and expecting better outcome rather than pushing all the frustration towards the end you know that's what happened in most of the time in feedback because you don't really check on the progress, you just wait until the end product and then you vent all your frustration there. You know, you know, this student doesn't really understand. It, it's a bit too late. From the learner's point of view, they can't really improve. They can't really develop from whatever weaknesses they have. Not only you have to make your feedback specific to the learning outcome, you know, you can always spell out the learning outcome. So this week, I just want to check your introduction, make sure your thesis statement is correct for example so that helps you to be more specific in the feedback and then the following two weeks maybe I want to see how you develop your points so you might want to explore some possibilities in doing this so don't limit yourself to one way of delivering feedback or to your learners or responses to your learners uh, so be in that constant fit forward mode that constantly think about the best way to convey your responses to your learners so that they can improve instead of just painting point instead of just pinpointing their mistakes or their errors that wouldn't help in learning anyway 
So Joe has outlined more strategies in his book. You might want to check that out. Uh, the most crucial thing, I think, when it comes to feedback, it has to be expanding possibilities. And of course, it has to be specific, not too generic. Sometimes generic feedback doesn't really help learners to improve. If you really care about improvement of your learners, then something has to be done in the way you give your feedback. Instead of pulling them back, you might want to push them forward and do something better. So that's all for this episode. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. If you're on podcast, then don't forget to follow my podcast on Edubytes. So if you have any suggestion or comment, please leave it in the comment box. I'll be more than happy to entertain your feed forward responses. Thank you. See you in the next episode.